Welcome to Find Me in a Book. This podcast is meant to be like you're talking to your best friend about romance books. I share my passion with those who love to read, those who don't have time to read, or those that don't like to read, but still want to know and be involved with book conversations. Thank you for being here. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. How are we feeling now that Iron Flame is out? It's been a couple weeks since everyone, I bet, has devoured it. I know that I definitely devoured it, and I don't know about anyone else, but it was truly exhausting. <laughs> like, I I read it, I believe, within, I think it took me three days, and my sister, she read it the same amount, and we finished the same time, and I think, like, we both did this, the Marco Polo, where we do videos to each other, and we both just kind of like delir- deliriously, that's the word, uh, giggled <laughs> with each other because we were so exhausted from scouring just every single detail. I don't know if that's how you guys felt, but I it took me forever to read it. Like I felt like it took me forever to read it because I would have to read like the paragraphs like multiple times over because I was so scared that I was going to miss something uh, because I felt like I missed a lot of things in fourth wing. So I I think that's why I was just exhausted. And also there was just so much detail and so many things happening that I just, yeah, it was a lot. Um, So an episode definitely is going to be happening with my mom and sister and my sister-in-law, Emily, just finished it today. So I'm hoping that she might be on as well. And we are just going to deep dive. I tried to stay away from spoilers. I stayed away from TikTok for the the couple days that I read it. And then once I was done, I immediately went and saw all the theories and all the details that I didn't catch. And it was, again, mind-blowing. Like how people come up with all these different things. I'm just... There's not going to be any spoilers in this episode about Iron Flame because it's just, it was an experience. It really was. And I hope that everyone has read it or like is still reading it or just you do you. And I'm just, I'm here. And if you want to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. Um, and I'm so glad that we have TikTok so that I can talk to people on there and about different things that I thought and what they thought. And it just... Yeah, I feel like I had a book hangover from there. Speaking of like a book hangover, I don't know about you, which I keep saying that I don't know about you because I don't. Uh, But with me, when I read like a big fantasy novel, it's hard for me to go into another fantasy novel because I'm going to tell you my TBR. But the reason I haven't read them is because it. I just I just need a minute to like settle with my feelings on Iron Flame before I get into another one. So like Fate of the Elf Queen is the third book uh, for like Bow Before the Elf Queen that I've read with my mom and sister. I still haven't read this third one. And we made my mom read it. She got it done so quick because we thought we'd do an episode, but we didn't have time yet. And so she's already done before even Iron Flame came out. And me and my sister are like, oh my gosh, we we need to read this. But we're tired. And... (laughs) So I don't think we'll read it for another week or so. Um, I'm sure we'll do an episode in the next month uh, just so that we can talk about it and kind of get it off of our plate. But I think our next one will be The Iron Flame. Again, this one, I feel like my TBRs are like second and third books in these fantasy series. And that's another reason why I haven't read them is because I have to go back through like the first and second book to really remember what's happening and then immerse myself in these third books that I have to remember all the details and convince myself I'm in a different world than the one in Iron Flame because again, like it just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to put myself in a different fantasy world when I was just sucked into a, another one. So I have, yeah, Fate Fate of the Elf Queen. I have Light Lark, the second book, which is Nightbane by Alex Astor. I'm really excited to read that one. I think I read the first three chapters, but then I got distracted with the books that I'm going to do today because I really wanted to read those. And 
Yeah. And then we have The Flesh and the Fire, which is the third book uh, in the Jennifer Armentrout series um, with like Nyctos and kind of like the prequels to The Blood and Ash. Um, I need to read that. And then we have, I think it's a third book, um, which is not a fantasy. It's called Caught Up. It's like the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. Um, I've been really excited to read that. And I actually do want to read that, I think, this week because it's not a fantasy. It's just like real world. Um, so I, I won't have to think very hard about it. Um, and yeah, so that's my little TBR for right now. Um, but the books today, I have mentioned them multiple times previously, um, in the past two years that I've been doing this podcast. Um, but it's the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa. And I, I keep forgetting about this series, um, but it's always been in like my library. And so I always go back to it and I always forget how good they are. And so when I, I was really craving, I don't know what, what made it pop in my head, but all of a sudden I was like, oh, I really want to read the first book. And once I read the first book, I was like, oh, I should do this for the, the podcast and do all four books. So it is now 10 o'clock at night on a Monday night and the episode will be up tonight. Um, but it took me a while to really get through all four books and I'm not going to, there's not going to be like very many spoilers. Um, cause you're basically going to know like the, the summaries of all of them, but I won't do, I won't say like any twists or turns or really big spoilers, you know, like it's just going to be main plot stuff. Um, so you don't have to worry about that because I do highly recommend these books, but I do want to tell you, um, that they are kind of brutal. And as, because it's been a couple of years since I've read all of them, and I think actually Death came out, like the last book, Death, came out a year ago or two years ago, but it was hard for me to get into it because I had forgotten the other three books, and so reading them all in a row was really nice because I remembered like each character and, and everything like that. Um, but yeah, these are brutal. Um, you, I guess you could call them... Uh, I guess you could call them a dark romance um, because they are pretty brutal in a sense that um, there's four books and they're each the four horsemen and they're here basically to destroy the world, which I think that's what really captured my attention is because this is real world, but it's like a potential of what could happen, even though I, I don't think I, I believe in the four horsemen, but it was still like such a... An, an option, I guess you could say that it could happen, that that's why it was kind of like, I don't know, thrilling. <laughs> that sounds weird. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna get into it. So the first book is called Pestilence. And this is where we kind of learn all about them. And um, Pestilence shows up. Um, but through these years, um, I'm going to tell you like, they throughout the books they say the like year 12 of the horsemen and so you know like how long that they've been there and um they are basically this this these books are kind of biblical um because i think it goes along with like a scripture in the bible that talks about the four horsemen and so it's kind of like a biblical book but it doesn't go into like any religion or anything like that it's just kind of a sense um, of of God and they say like God isn't a like who but what and just kind of like very high level type things that it doesn't get into like nitty gritty details or it's just kind of an overall like hey there's a God and there's a four horsemen and he sent the four horsemen to give us four chances for redemption like the the people here on earth and um basically they're here to kill us or give us these redemptions and they're calling us home for God. That's basically like the the big synopsis. Um, but they they all appeared at one time, but they rode to the different f like four corners of the earth, it says. And then three of them, s actually all of them slept like underground. I don't really know where they slept. Um, but then one by one, they each awoke. And so pestilence is first. When they when they first arrived, though, 
they crashed everything. So like the internet crashed, computers crashed, engines failed, planes fell, fell from the sky, like innovations just ceased. Like anything man-made just completely ceased. And that's when um, pestilence then awoke, um, kind of like right off the bat. And one thing about them that you'll realize pretty quickly is they don't die. But I guess you could say they do die, but they don't stay dead. And so they go through a lot of death. And it's very kind of like descriptive in that way. And so we have Pestilence, which that book is about 365 pages. War is the second book. It's about 485 pages. Um, Famine is about 460. And then Death, um, I didn't write it down, but I want to say that it's around like 480 as well. So the books get longer as they go. um, And there's like some parts where I'm like, ah. You could probably cut that out. It's just kind of fluff with it. Um, But for the most part, it's pretty action packed like the whole time. Like uh, it's it's very good. Very uh, once again, it's like very brutal because they're like killing people and um, capturing people and just doing their thing because that's what they know to do. Like they don't know humans. They just like, well, that's the thing. Like they know our hearts and they have been sent down here for a task and they're going to do that task and they have really like no emotions or like humanity in them because we've basically already proven that we're not worth it and they're like we're just here to do a task like we're gonna wipe you out so that definitely uh plays into it where it's just like I had to skip through some of the things because it's kind of descriptive with like some torture stuff not that they're being tortured like the female characters but like just with like killing the cities and the people and there's like a couple moments in some of the books where I was like oh my gosh that's so sad um so yeah there's there's definitely some aspects of that um but when we get into pestilence so we meet Sarah first um and this is mostly a single point of view and um so it's like first person in some of the books we get like a mostly the third book i would say or sorry the fourth book with death it goes to dual point of view which is interesting um but yeah for the most part these books are first person one point of view and so going back to it sarah is our first female character and she's in canada she's a fireman and her and her fireman friends, like, the the horseman has been there for five years. Like, he's been going around the Americas for five years. And they know that he is heading through their little town in Canada. And so they pick straws, or they pick matches to see who's going to stay to try and kill pestilence. And so she gets this short end, and so she stays. Everyone else leaves with their families. And so she goes and... Um, she's able to like kill him. Actually, she, she goes to try and kill him, but, um, this other group of people kill him first. And so he like is in really bad shape. And so he actually captures her, um, because I think she tries to kill him too. I honestly, I read through these books so fast. It makes me mad that I can't remember what exactly happened, but basically he captures her. He takes her hostage. And what I like about these books, actually the first and fourth book have this, but these horsemen, they don't know really emotions, I guess you could say. Like, Um, he doesn't know that what he's feeling is like attraction towards her. He doesn't know, like, they're just very harsh men and very straightforward and they don't know any, what their emotions mean. And so I really liked the first book because, um, he does take Sarah hostage and he does go throughout like Canada and down through America And she's trying to get him to stop killing people and to stop taking, um, like, the cities down, like, crumbling, like, for him to stop this. And he's like, no, this is my purpose. And so slowly throughout the book, you see her kind of break him down to where he he's like, I don't, I feel something for you. Like, what is this that I feel? Like, I'm obsessed with you. And so, like, of course, he's never kissed someone. And so, like, 
he figures out how to kiss and then it does get kind of spicy but this definitely isn't the spiciest book they get spicier and spicier as they go um and so slowly they fall in love with each other and at the very end he pleads to death because something happens to sarah and so he goes like into heaven or wherever he needs to to talk to his brother death and is like please save her and that's one of the the aspects in each of these books or the similarities between these three books is that at the end they always face death and they say please save this woman for me um because they love them and i i love that i love um that they're like learning who they are and learning humanity throughout all of it and that these women are helping them learn humanity so i loved the first one the second book is war which this one i feel is a little bit more brutal um because uh it's interesting he says that unlike unlike his brothers he exists solely in the hearts of men so he knows men's heart like the other ones like all creatures can experience these like pestilence and famine and death like animals can but it's only within men's hearts that war is there and so it's a little bit more brutal it's more verbally spicy um i would say that war is very open with his talk because he's around crude men and he has to be really like masculine and brutal just to get the respect and so i would say it's it's more verbally spicy there but it is quite spicy as well um but i love i think it's within the first couple chapters that um once he sees her i think she has like a scar on her chest that it's like a symbol in like god's language and um I can't remember what it means, like surrender or something. Yes, it's surrender. And but he instantly knows that she's his wife. And so he says, like, you're my wife. And so then he like uh, basically captures her and she tries to get away multiple times. Like all of these women try to get away, away multiple times, but the men find them. And just to go through them. So they're um, let's see. Sorry, I didn't say this. So with war. Um, he appeared in year 10 of like the horsemen and he met Miriam, which is the female character in this story on year 13. And this is based in Jerusalem and the, the different areas throughout there. It, it's really interesting to see her slowly whittle him down um, to have more humanity throughout the book because he starts to like spare children and then he spares elderly and spares the innocent. Like I, I just really love the destruction, deconstruction, that's the word, of these men that are just so like, I keep saying brutal, but it, that really is like the right word. Um, and they just become more human and it's just so enticing. So again, there's the plea for death at the end um, and everything works out. And then the third book is with famine and he awakens. Let's see. So war meets Miriam year 13 and then uh, famine. He awakens in year 16 and he meets Anna in year 19. Um, but then the book actually opens up on year 24. So in year 19, um, famine gets like, he gets cut in half, he gets tortured. Like these horsemen really go through a lot, but they just keep coming back to life. Like they can feel the pain, they can feel their death. And so that fuels them to kind of wipe out humanity, which is honestly kind of understandable. Um, and so he meets Anna year 19. He gets like really, you know, messed up and she saves him. Like she helps him until he's able to like regrow his limbs. And then um, she escapes because he's like, come with me. You're the only one that has really helped me. Um, like, come with me. And she's like, no. And so she leaves. And then it comes back to year 24. And um, this book is actually like, pretty spicy uh, because Anna is a prostitute and um, her and her madame like he comes through their town and um, he is in this like really nice house and he's going to like talk to people and basically kill them so her and her madame which is kind of like her boss they go because they're going to offer Anna to him and they go and he doesn't remember her and he makes them go out back and um stabs them and so Anna 
almost dies. Um, but somehow she like is awakened. She gets up um, and he she's able to heal herself and find him. Um, and she like tries to kill him. And she's like, do you remember who I am? And they remember. And then he he keeps her basically. And one of the reasons why I really like this book is because Anna is very witty. I really like Anna. She is very real. She's spunky. She's witty. She's fiery. Like all these women are very fiery. Like they hold their ground. They know who they are. They're just very strong, independent women. And it's just like, it's just Anna and, um, it's just Anna that is very witty and funny and like just very, very personable, which uh, that's one of the reasons why I really liked her. Um, and so at the end, once again, death. It, oh, at the end of this one, it's very interesting because you think that it's going to end really happy, but actually um, death arrives like um, towards the very end. Um, famine is like I, f I feel my brother he's awake and so they're like oh my gosh death is coming so at the very end um there's like this deal that's kind of made and that's when famine is like I need to gather our, my brothers and we need to defeat death because if we don't our wives and our children because now like they have children and it's just very very cute um and so that leads into the book of death, um, book four. And this is based in Georgia here in the U.S. And this is year 26. And so let's see, opens there in Brazil in year 24. And then death comes two years later, year 26. And it's interesting because the female character for this book, her name is actually Lazarus. And she has faced death many times and she has basically come back to life so she can't be killed either and um at the very beginning pet when pestilence goes through her family dies and she was just a young girl and so she was able to find like her adopted mom and she um in her in the current time she is at this market um trying to find some presents for her niece and then all of a sudden everyone drops dead and death rides through and he's confused because he sees her. Everyone else is supposed to be dead. And he sees her and she's not dead. And he's very confused. And he's like, come with me. Um, and he starts to like already feel something for her. Like, this is my soulmate. And he, she's like, what? Who are you? Like, I don't know who you are. Um, and so she goes home. She finds out all her family is dead. And so she wants revenge. And so she finds him again in Tennessee. He actually like snaps her neck and she wakes up the next day and they do that back and forth. Like they they find each other or she starts to find him more. And then she's she has two main goals after that. She wants to warn the towns that he's coming and try to stop him by any means. And so, yeah, she follows him and fights him at every single place. Um, at one point, Death is like, I want you. Like, I want you to come with me. And she's like, absolutely not. Like, and they just go to this cat and mouse, basically. And um, at one point, the three horsemen find her. Like, the brothers find her. And they want her to stop Death. Or they want her help. They're like, hey, um, like, we need you to do something. Like, help us with this. And... As um, I think one of the brothers is like fighting death, um, like physically, she runs off and she actually finds this baby um, that she takes care of for months and months and just like runs away from death. At one point, this baby gets really sick. So she has to go to the hospital and that's where death finds her. And he's like, I can give you a day because she's like, please save this baby. I love this baby. He's like, I can give you a day. So she actually goes and finds one of the brothers and says, can you please heal this baby? And he does. But he's like, we need to make a deal. And that's when war kind of steps in. And he's like, we need you to seduce him. Like, we will save your baby. We need you to seduce death. We will take this baby and take him to our families. Like, our wives will take care of him. He'll be, like, one of our children. He'll be safe. He'll be, like, healthy. But we want you to seduce death. And she makes that deal. The 
chapters leading up to kind of the grand finale is her and death getting to know each other and one of the reasons i did like this fourth book as well is because he has no other knowledge of the world either like um of affection and love like the other two so war and pestilence they have been there for a while and they know toast and they know and if you haven't ever been listened to this episode or this podcast before toast means sex I just have a hard time saying that word and so uh I like to say toast um so basically she seduces him they actually fall in love and then at the very end um is like the last stand with the brothers which it it works out well and it's really great um and i just really i really like these books like even though it is hard to read like what the cities go through and what like could happen if the four horsemen really were real like because i i really think that this could happen if the the horsemen were real you know what i'm saying like it's kind of the aspect of like oh like kind of scary Um, but it just, it's a, they're just a really, really solid book. And that's how I knew, like when Laura Thalassa came out with her new series, Bewitched, I knew it would be really good, which I did an episode on the first book. I think the second book is coming out soon. I hope anyways, I think she just barely like sent it to be finished or something. So I'm really excited about that. But I am just, I am a fan of Laura. I really am. Like, her writing, I think, is really good. Um, It really feels like you're there, and the characters are really good, and she just makes you fall through these horsemen, even though they are really gruff, but they they don't know, and it's, it's so, like, I just love seeing and reading, not seeing, but reading how they fall for these women and, like, these new experiences for them, and it just, I love it. I just love it. So I highly recommend these books. Um, they just are so good. I want to say that they're on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, you definitely should at least try the first book because that's what really sucked me in. And I have had the series for a really long time, ever since they came out, which I don't know the year of that was, um, but it's it's been a while since I, I've had these books, so... And they they keep coming to mind um, because I I do like the it really genuinely is an enemies to lovers book. And that's why I think I genuinely just love them so much. Like they are just mortal enemies and it's it's like a redemption. And I just I have no other words. I really don't. I just love it so much. So highly recommend these books, um, and I hope you guys have um, enjoyed the last couple uh, the last couple of episodes. Uh, I did have like those interviews with those authors. I was terrified, but uh, I enjoyed talking to them. And then we had the one with my mom and sister. Um, what were we talking about? I don't even remember which one we were talking about. Oh, we were just talking about like book talk stuff. I'm excited for the next next couple episodes hopefully to have them back on and then I think I'm going to be doing some more interview uh interviews with authors which will be really exciting so definitely stay tuned for that um but yeah I just kind of wanted to kick it back and and do an episode just about books like how it, it was um I mean how it's always been you know what I'm saying uh of course change happens and we're I'm adapting to things and and trying to bring more excitement into the podcast so I'm just glad y'all are here with me and I'm glad that you're listening and yeah follow me on Instagram and TikTok it's find me in a book podcast and then wherever you listen to this podcast if you could rate and review that would be so cool um I don't, I don't know why I just said that, but it's fine. I don't know why I said it that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, But I definitely appreciate you guys. And I appreciate just who you are and your comments and feedback. And I just, I just love it all. So um, yeah, I, that sums up this little episode for you. And I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you next week.